Dearest reader, welcome to Green and Garb's romantic romp through the land of Bridgerton. Not sponsored. And this story will be full of scandalous secrets, naughty nobles, and lucrative love matches. We'll clutch your pearls because the salacious social season of the wealthy ton is about to begin. Yours in ardor, Lady Whisperfield. <laughs> The afternoon sun sparkles across the cobblestone streets in the city of Bridgerton, an impeccably clean city, this beautiful seaside town. You feel a summer breeze floating through the streets, and this city right now is full of all of the summer blooms. We are in the height of the month of August, so you are smelling zinnias and dahlias and perhaps some daffodils as well. You see as you go through this lovely town in your beautiful carriage, nobility and their silken gowns and tailored waistcoats gracing all the promenades throughout the many bridges of the town of Bridgerton. And you hear their laughter <laughs> mingling through the melodies that you hear of hmm, a distant harp, perhaps? Well, throughout all of your passage through this city, you are seeing the splendor of this city, which is all thanks to Queen Violet the First and her husband, King Edmund the 77th, and all of their <laughs> hard work and their perhaps conquests. So at the heart of this city is the Grand Castle standing as a beacon of majesty and grace, its towering spires, are standing as a testament to the enduring legacy of this monarchy's reign. The walls perhaps whisper of tales mm, of enchanting nights, a silent whisper of the ebbs and flows of time in this city of opulence and splendor. Now you all are part of the town of this city, which means the upper crust, let's say, very wealthy. Not everyone can speak to you all. You all find yourselves right now in your carriages on your way to the summer ball held by the Hawthorne family. So you're making your way to their mansion for the summer ball. So as you are in your carriages, you see that your attendants held left right next to your seat, a stack of your correspondence. So perhaps some letters, um, no bills because you're wealthy. And perhaps you look through and find, hmm, the latest Lady Whisperfield letter. You take a moment. Oh, should you read it now? That's what everybody's going to be talking about at the ball. So you should know what's going on, right? And so you open it up <clears throat> and take a moment and start to read. And it says this, Dearest reader, welcome back to Bridgerton. It has been such a long springtime waiting for the ton season to begin again. We are waiting for love matches. We are waiting for Queen Violet, or perhaps Queen Vain Violet, as I like to call her. We are waiting for her to choose her diamond of the season, and it will probably happen at today's ball at Lord Reginald Hawthorne's manor. There has been quite a lot that has happened this springtime and throughout the early summer days, like Lord Trenning, ever the favorite with his luscious curly locks, but it seems like Lord Trenning's eye has been wandering this summer while his lover has been away at the war. How dare Lord Trenning? His fiance is just trying to protect our brave lands for his queen. So we also know that perhaps the Trenning family hasn't been very fair on what side they decided to support in this war. But enough about that. <laughs> You'll see him today at the Hawthorne Manor. But we do have to talk about dearest reader, our esteemed Duchess Montclair. And we do know, take a moment as you read this, pause, to say a silent prayer for Duke Montclair, who tragically oh. and suddenly and very, oh, so, so quickly passed. So mm -hmm. all we know is that Duke and Duchess got married on a lovely Saturday night. The next morning, his body found on the floor in the garden. 
He fell. <gasps> Thus, three, four, three flights to his death. A cracked neck, a broken spine, and a tearful <laughs> new bride drenched in his blood. Standing over his body. <laughs> now, did she push him? I don't know. You should ask her at the ball today. <laughs> Yours in ardor. Good luck, Lady Sterling. Lady Whisperfield. <clears throat> you close up the letter. Put it away. And take a quick look at the invitation to the ball. To remind yourself, okay, this is where we're going. It says... It is with great pleasure and anticipation that I extend to you an invitation to join me at Hawthorne Manor for a soiree of splendor and mirth. The garden shall be adorned, the music shall enchant, and the stars themselves shall bear witness to our revelry. See you soon, Lord Reginald Hawthorne. By the time that you've read, again, the invitation that you received earlier and the Lady Whisperfield, you make your way to the grand entrance of the Hawthorne Manor. Your carriage pulls up. We know that this noble's country estate glows in this bright summer sun. You see all of this beautiful ivy has climbed its way up the walls all the way to the spires. Now, you have already seen the silk-clad gowns make their way up the stairs, and you hear laughter and music inside already. So, this lavish feast, you know, is one of the best of the whole summer. And as you make your way up, you see at the very top of the stairs, Lord Reginald Hawthorne is waiting to greet his guests. He is the head of this esteemed family, and they are known for their impeccable taste and grand affairs like this one. So, Lord Reginald Hawthorne stands tall, he's refined, he has silver hair that is slicked back, piercing blue eyes, <laughs> and his eyes hold perhaps a glint of uh, mischievous intelligence, maybe some secrets are found in that well-groomed beard, but all this to say, he's up there waiting for you. So your carriage enters that entrance, or I should say the grand entrance, and the first carriage to arrive is Lord Trenning. So Lord Trenning, your <laughs> squires open the door for you of your blue-crusted carriage, and how do you enter the foreign uh, estate? Oh my, uh, quite anxiously, having just read uh, the salacious <laughs> words of Lady Whisperfield lies, of course, all of them. <laughs> and you see that your footmen aren't making eye contact with you. Well, <clears throat> it's just gossip, truly. Yes, my lord. And no backing to it, none of it. Yes, my lord. We know. I know you have been looking forward to seeing your beloved today. Indeed, indeed I have. Surely he hasn't read it. I can explain myself before anything unravels. <laughs> and I sort of hurriedly move, move to Up in, stairs, inwards right. upstairs. Uh, Lord Reginald gives you a nod, kind of beckons you in. Yes. Great. And the next carriage that pulls up is the Duchess Montclair's carriage. It is white and beautifully adorned with images of flowers and doves. Um, I am going to... Um, Take a like a handkerchief, wipe an eye. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's appalling, shocking gossip, and I'm and I'm sure, I'm sure that what was said about Lord Trenning was also un un unbased, unfounded, a slanderous, disgusting gossip. You from and opens the door. Thank you. And I will pull out him. <laughs> Again, we're so sorry for your loss. Sorry. Thank you. And they go to buy the carriage. <laughs> and right afterwards, we see the Sterling carriage arrive. We see Lord and Lady Sterling, Adrian's parents, exit first, make their way up. They nervously look back at their daughter to make sure she's trailing behind. And the footmen stand at the ready. <laughs> Blocking either side. Yeah, yeah basically. <laughs> there's the women are right there. No, it's got <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna go in. Don't worry about it. Thank you. And they're like, uh, <laughs> watching you go in. <laughs> Mommy and Daddy have been like, make sure she gets in there. <laughs> and I've got the, I've like nervously, there's like some sweat on the pamphlet as I've seen my name at the very end. And my parents have just informed me prior to reading this 
that their intention is perhaps uh, for, you know, a pairing of sorts, because I haven't found my own match. Uh, it has know. been a whole summer long, and you have Light not found... Light attendance at yes. these events. Yes, yes. <laughs> late attending, so this is true. <laughs> uh, and as you kind of scuttle your way up, uh, you look, glance over, and you're expecting to see a carriage behind you. What you see instead is a stallion riding its way towards the manor. And on top of it, an another stallion. <laughs> 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 so, uh, <laughs> Lord Weston, you uh, gallivant your way forward. Uh, Lord Weston slides off of his horse unenthusiastically and notices a bit of grime on his shoulder from the ride and sees it on his hand and then wipes it on his pants. <laughs> the horse kind of nice. <clears throat> he pets the horse. Looks toward the manor as if he's looking at a chessboard preparing for a match and proceeds to walk inward. Ah, interesting, interesting. And as the horse kind of just stands there because Lord Weston has arrived with no footman at all, the horse just is there. Eventually you hear <laughs> Lord Reginald like, Somebody move that beast! Thank you! <clears throat> and as you wait for the horse to make its way into the stable, uh, we have the Baroness's carriage arrive. The Bumbery carriage arrives at the front. They open the door, Shwari. As they open the door, I'm getting out. I may be sure to tell my lady's maid um, that I left some biscuits. And once the, the horse and everyone gets to the stables, that the biscuits are, you know, free to become theirs. Thank you so much, my lady. Oh, Tiny Travis loves your biscuits, Bum. Uh, and then I slowly head in, um, sort of looking around, sort of, you know, surveying the area, not just what we're coming into, not just the chess match, but um, what's, what's everywhere and where one might hide or have some other adventure. <laughs> and uh, Lord Hawthorne sees you at the top. Just Baroness, <coughs> thank you for joining me. It's nice to make your way in. <laughs> and then we have next. Afterwards, your carriage drives away with your very happy uh, footman and ladies in waiting. And we have another carriage, perhaps one of the most opulent of carriages as compared to perhaps the Duchess's. This one is leafed in gold and crusted with emeralds along the edges and it does have the outline of a horse's mane painted onto the side of a carriage and the carriage pulls up with the finest of steeds these are breathtaking white stallions uh, they all have the horse all have piercing blue eyes <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and uh, as the door of the carriage opens you see almost I want to say like kind of like a clown car you see uh, Four very handsome, burly, bearded, gorgeous red headed men walk out. They stand at the top and they're waiting for their youngest sister to exit the carriage. I start exiting the carriage and I, Lily, watch my shoes. Oh, yes! You look so gorgeous! Thank you, sweetheart. You have to tell me all about it. Oh, I will, I will. Tonight, when I get home. Oh, okay, I'll be waiting for you. I'm so excited. Oh, me too. I mean, just, I'm so excited for you. It's your first ball. Yes, it is. So many eligible matches. Shh, don't let your brothers hear you. I'll punch. <laughs> and you hear, <clears throat> sister. Yes, Let's go. yes, my darling brothers, I'm coming, I'm coming. I pick up my dress a little bit and start shuffling up the stairs. Wait, go, go, go! And she, uh, <laughs> she pushes you along your way. Go get him! And then she, I, I turn around and... <laughs> Love her! And then the carriage kind of makes its way out. And so at this point... Oh, not everyone has arrived yet. The last carriage to arrive is one that Lord Hawthorne has been waiting for. His eyes light up as he sees it, because it is marked with the crest of the military, of the Queen's military forces. So this arrives. It is a beautiful white and purple carriage. And as the doors open, we see walk out <clears throat> the rear admiral, Lucius Stormborn, 
And by storm woman, just storm. Just storm. <laughs> that was like, is that your name now? Great. Just storm. I'll go Great. Down. I'm going to uh, polish my shoes very quickly. Make sure I'm fully um, prepped and ready, as I would on any day of battle or not battle. <laughs> and I will step out with my head held high, proud and noble. Excellent. Uh, as you make your way up, uh, mm-hmm. Lord Hawthorne says, my dear friend. Lord Hawthorne. It is good to see you. It has been some years. It has. Thank you for everything you have done for us. You think to thank me? I fight for a queen for our country. Yes. I fight for the freedom of everybody. Well, I hope you can enjoy tonight's revelry. I will try. I've not um, partaken in quite a while, but yes. thank you very much for hosting us. It is an honor to be here. Ah, oh, it's an honor to have you. I hope you did not read today's garbage, Lady Whisperfield. Anyways, indeed go, have. have a drink. Indeed I have. I will, oh, well, I will find you later. All right. For a spot of something harder than tea. All right, make your way in. Uh, so at this point, all of the guests have pretty much arrived. Uh, our Admiral was the last to arrive. Um, so you make your way in. At this point, you hear, <clears throat> Attention! And all the squires kind of stand up as Lord Hawthorne makes his way in. Um, so he walks in and you start to see his, you know, family kind of go around him a little bit. Um, so he walks up to the top of the stairs and he goes, My friends, ladies and gentlemen, you do us a great honor by gracing Hawthorne Manor with your presence today. May this day be filled with joy and laughter. There's many to do here at the gardens, later at the horse races, and we'll see you when the stars are shining at their brightest for dancing. Enjoy the finest of luxuries. And his servants come out, and what you're seeing in front of you is a beautiful garden. He has spared no expense. There are bouquets of gorgeous flowers. There are ice sculptures in the shapes of different animals. You have deer and all of these beautiful creatures like elephants, things you may have never seen before, giraffes and zebras, all made of ice sculptures. There are, at this ball, a lot of things that you all can partake in, and you know this going into it. There is an archery tournament if you would like to partake. A garden maze challenge, don't get lost. There's a croquet match happening at the back of the field. And you know, a horse race will be happening later on. There is also a poetry recitation happening inside the manor. And if you would like to perhaps spend some time with somebody, you do know that they do have a private river that goes through his lands and they have a pleasure boat cruise. And set up across from the croquet field is a lovely purple and golden tent where a very famous fortune teller perhaps is reading fortunes. And at the end of the night, you can look forward to a fireworks display. So as you make your way in, the first person who comes right up to the Admiral is a very tall, kind of portly man, big belly, ruddy cheeks, piercing blue eyes. He goes, sir, it is good to see you. Now, uh, you know this, sir, to be a general who's above you. His name is General Yaxus. Okay. And this general has been a guiding force. If it is so good to see you. I'll bow deeply to him. <clears throat> general Yaxus. And next to General Yaxus, you see Lord Jack, who happens to be somebody's older brother. He kind of looks at you up and down. <clears throat> Lord Jack. Tips. Jack. Excellent. <laughs> and Jack just kind of looks at you. <laughs> Admiral Storm. The gym. Back so soon. Back so soon, well. Well, I hesitate to say that due to my efforts we won the war, but we did win the war. Mm. What did you do? Well, you know, my brother and I were taking care of business while you were out gallivanting. Oh, right, so risking my life for the queendom is gallivanting. I suggest you quiet before you tarnish your your honor even more than you already have. All right, well, enjoy your evening. At this point, Jack makes his way out. He goes, in general, don't mind him, son. <coughs> he just, I don't think he's been very, uh, <laughs> late very recently. Anyways, do you want some, uh, do you want a drink? Let me go find you one. Well. A hero. Yes. And generally access to this point, he, <laughs> <laughs> he 
He does not wait for you. Well, some, of, some of my people might call me a hero, but maybe not. I'm looking around. Uh, do, who do I see? Um, so I around you, you see people who, you know, you have not seen in a long time mm-hmm. because you have been away at war. You see some faces that you recognize, perhaps. Um, but can you roll for perception for me, please? Yes, the first roll. First roll. First roll. Nice. Nice. Oh, I see a 20. That's a 1. <laughs> 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 I just kind of looking around you like, you're like, oh, and you gotta, you gotta sneeze. You, uh, you do a big sneeze, and you really sneeze all over the flutes of champagne that were. Oh, oh, oh no! And you what? see Lady Hawthorne. Goes, oh, what do they teach you in that war? Lady, I'm sorry. I'm used to being in C. Um, no, wipe your oh, nose. Geez. And Lady Hawthorne kind of goes to clap to her servants to go change up. Well, the uh, oh, it's a good thing the queen likes you. No. She makes her way off. Uh, so you don't see anybody. Oops. You're just embarrassed, though. So. <laughs> oh, <excuse me. laughs> uh, and so I will ask, I will turn my way over to um, the Duchess and her brothers. So your one of your brothers, Balthazar, he looks at you and says, Now, you better stay close to me, sister. Why? So many men around here who might try to tarnish your beauty. Your name? That's kind of the bully. Do you still need How dare you? And Balthazar kind of just sees kind of his bros over there, and he just gets up quick gallivanting over there. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to sneak away. Oh, okay. Well, I'd like you to uh, roll for... Uh, let's have you roll for um, stealth for me, please. <laughs> Because you're standing right next to your that other two brothers. That was natural 20. Wow! Yay! Okay, at this point, you kind of hear Balthazar. <laughs> brothers, come over here! So, at this point, Balthazar has beckoned your other brothers. They turn back, and in that moment, you... Where are you running to? Um, Because you're alone now. You've evaded your what, three brothers. What is in... Um, not the immediate vicinity. What is what is far enough away for me to be not near them? Okay, Um, there is the maze. The garden maze is farther away towards the back of the estate. Okay. Um, There's also a croquet map as well happening towards the back and the fortune tellers. Those are the ones that are farther back. I'd like to go to the fortune teller. Great. All right, so you're kind of making your way through. Uh, and have you roll also for perception to see if you recognize anybody perhaps from the, the papers and such. Um, Perception, perception, perception. It's a 16. Okay, at this point, you have you start to recognize some of the people around you. Absolutely, as you kind of make your way through, recognize the Duchess, somebody who is at similar standing to you mm-hmm. as you make your way towards the fortune teller pavilion. Okay, well, I am um, a little bit gullible, so I'm going to avert my gaze. Right! <laughs> I love it, I love it. So you're going to make your way towards the... Um, uh, I make my way to the fortune teller fortune and teller's I'll pavilion. quickly step away. Great! <laughs> uh, I'll pass it on and we'll cut to uh, my friends over here anywhere you'd like to make your way to because we just saw you and I would like to make my way towards the um, towards the croquet excellent okay so you can make your way towards the croquet match great and you can partake if you would like after it I am and I'm also well I will but I think I'm walking over to see who is also engaged in the croquet where people are at. I'm just sort of taking in what's going on at this party and okay. it seems to be. Excellent. So over at the croquet match, there's a couple of other uh, no like nobility that you may or may not have known. Um, you do see uh, one person in particular who uh, do has has like reputation for being just a very excellent conversationalist. Mm-hmm. This is uh, Lord Alexander Worthington uh, as well. He's a very handsome man. Um, he does have this way of making a very mundane conversation very exciting uh, as well. So he's over there. He's kind of winning the game of croquet at this point. Okay. Yes. Through word of mouth. Through brass word of mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, yeah, I would love to go talk to, uh, I'm sorry, Word Alex Wor- Uh-huh, Lord Alexander Worthington. He's the one who's winning right now at the croquet match. Um, I... And he goes, good shots, boys. I'm going to, um, very, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to, like, lean over as I'm watching and I'm going to say, like, can you explain to me your strategy? I'm afraid I'm terrible at croquet. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, he turns to you and you start to get lost in his, his blue eyes. <laughs> 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 All right, eyes are gorgeous. Um, <laughs> 
we match. <laughs> Thank you. And so the others do. <laughs> <laughs> We're all related. <laughs> uh, you've never played before. Uh, I've played once or twice when I'm afraid I'm just terrible at it. And let me have you roll for, uh, is this, tr- let me have you roll for deception. Yeah. <laughs> let's see, let's see. Yeah, uh, that's a 10, I'm pretty sure, no. 11. Okay, 11. Uh, so, uh, Lord Worthington looks at you and he goes, Your late husband never taught you how to play croquet? I'm afraid we didn't have the chance. It's one of the things he was looking forward to teaching me, and I'm, I suppose maybe this is a little bit of a way that I could... Oh, to learn. learn. Oh, well, why don't you <laughs> think he loves? Come with me. I can <laughs> assuage your sadness. Oh, thank you. So he reaches out his hand yes. and he starts to kind of promenade <laughs> around and he mm-hmm. starts to kind of eloquently speak about mm-hmm. croquet and, mm-hmm. and, and sticks and balls. <laughs> 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 say. Give us sticks and balls as <laughs> so you kind of make your way around. Here, here. And arches. <laughs> and arches. <laughs> You have to do it with just the precise stroke. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Start doing the ghost <laughs> scene when he comes yeah. up behind you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and oh. you swing it like this. <laughs> love. Like this? Oh, stick like this. <laughs> What's the proper form? <laughs> well, it's going to take uh, more than one night show of you. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, You know. And, uh, and at this point, uh, we're gonna, let's turn over to our, our friend, the Baroness of Bunbury. Uh, and is, where, can you tell me where you are at right now? Where are you standing? So I'm sort of at the edge of the garden, sort of looking out, seeing, seeing what's going on, trying to figure out what I want to do. Um, and I decide then that I want to go to the archery field. Oh, excellent. So as you kind of make your way over to the archery field, um, can you roll for perception for me? Um, let's see, let's see. I think that's a 15. Ooh, excellent, a 15. So you're making your way towards the archery field, and you see kind of a a young wisp of a girl catch your eye. Mm-hmm. She turns a corner. Is she turning towards the archery field or away from yeah, it? Towards the archery field. Oh, even luckier. So, <laughs> so I kind of watch her sort of mosey that way. Not a creepy way. But in like a, hmm, I wonder what she's doing. Um, and I I come up and say, oh, well, hello, lady. Hello. And she's, let's say, about 12 years old. She is, actually, let's do, um, let's have you roll for, let's have you roll for history. See if you know who this is. Eleven. So you know this to be uh, Lady Amaya Hawthorne. She is the daughter of Lord Hawthorne who's throwing the ball. Um, So she's about 12 years old. I have seen her around. Um, Well, it's nice to meet you, Baroness. I'm Lady Hawthorne. And uh, I just wanted to say that my ladies in waiting, um, they they speak really kindly of you. They've seen you around town. I think it's very brave of you. Why, thank you. Uh, I do appreciate that when people speak kindly of me. Um, when you say around town, um, did they tell you what I was doing? Oh, no. Uh, well, uh, I'm probably not old enough to know about that stuff. Well, well. My um, sister hasn't talked to me yet about things I shouldn't know. Well, and we're not going to go into them here. Um oh. If you do hear more, um, please do tell me. Did they have to tell you what I was wearing or, you know, how long they saw me for? Um, maybe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can I you roll for, uh, let's have you roll for, uh, persuasion. How would you like to persuade her? The secret telling you. <laughs> um, so that's 14. <laughs> Um, they did say that perhaps you were on the not-so-great side of town wearing a red dress. Yes. It is a be- <gasps> I don't know. <sighs> That's just what they said. It is a beautiful dress. And that something about biscuits. Whatever that means. 
I do make the most wonderful biscuits. They are known throughout the town. And the town. Well, I might ask, what are your servants doing there? What What do you need on that side of town that they would be walking around? Well, are you asking about my papa? <laughs> 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 he invited you here. Oh, well, I think I need to go. And she scurries. Uh, let's make our way over to uh, Secret, Lady Sterling. Great. Okay. Well. Where are you at, Lady Sterling? I've uh, cinched up my, my little waistcoat as I get to the entry. I'm going to look for, uh, first, the coolest plant. Okay. And then second, my good friend, Lord Trenning. Hey, great. Can I have your roll for perception, please? Sure. Plantception. Plantception. <laughs> um, five. <laughs> great. As you are looking around for this plant, uh, you hear... <clears throat> Daughter. Oh, hello, father. <laughs> I'm looking for good dances, of course. You should be looking at the Duchess. <laughs> yes, that's what I Your think. mother and I do not speak when I'm speaking. <laughs> Your mother and I <laughs> have worked very hard to find you and your laziness. A lucrative <laughs> match for a sin. Now do as your father says. Go say hello to the Duchess. She's over there. Oh, I'm you like, wait, Lord I... Worthington! <laughs> Are you being dumb? Talk you stick a ball, yeah. <laughs> She's supposed to be an okay! <laughs> and he... And your mom has said nothing. <laughs> She's just standing there. Ah, <laughs> uh-huh, yes. Uh, I will greet people, though, as I should, to be polite on the way. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Lady Sterling. You hear some whispers. Oh, oh, yes, okay. About Z? Oh. I, can you, uh, let's see, let's have you, uh, roll for... <laughs> oh my gosh, I have no idea. Perce- perception? Perception? Insight? Insight. 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 Let's do insight. Yeah. I like that. Thanks, friends. Six? <laughs> That's a one. So, as you're kind of, uh, you're making your way, you, you're really just hearing this. <laughs> <laughs> you don't hear anything. <laughs> Head empty, no thoughts. Yep. <laughs> Great. As you make your way over towards uh, the croquet. Sure. Uh, it does, it does, does uh, Lord Trending happen to be on the way, or have I just managed uh, to. Yes, Lord Trending is okay. around the croquet field as well. Okay. Uh, he's just kind of right. watching the game time. Okay, I'm gonna sidle up beside you, Lord Drenning. Yes, Lady Sterling. Oh, what a relief it is to see you. Oh, you've got a lot to catch up on, friend. S- certainly we do. <clears throat> I assume that you've read the latest Whisperfield. Oh, oh yes. I read. I read a lot in there. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> many, many words. <laughs> so many words. Side by side. Side by side. Have you seen Lucius? Uh, Admiral no. Storm. Not yet, but I will certainly keep an eye out for him for you. Yes, please do. Have you seen? <laughs> Duchess Monk there. <laughs> <laughs> Why, yes, she seems to be having rather lovely time just right there. <laughs> just, just turn your head. She's literally right there. And Lord Worthington is kind of just but like flexing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't don't be obvious about it. <laughs> She's she's right in front of you. <laughs> Certainly, if the things about you are not true, then the things about her would not be true also. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. Oh, don't say that! <laughs> I mean, wow. this situation was certainly suspicious. Wouldn't you agree? But, well, <clears throat> I suppose. But also, I mean... But again, assuming that the things about you are untrue. Yes, yes, of course, of course. The then, benefit of the doubt is surely the most appropriate path to take. <laughs> okay. But she doesn't seem as, well, heartbroken as you might think. <laughs> Good start. I also have, and I'll reach into one of my little inside pockets mm-hmm. of my coat, uh, and I will hand you uh, a little packet of green uh, tea. 
And I will say, hey, this is, uh, as <clears throat> in my studies lately, I know that you've been having some pains, and I've found yes. that this basil and nettle leaf concoction may have <laughs> some benefits for kidney. <laughs> Thank you. you enjoy. <laughs> Let Very me know. much appreciated. I will mix it up right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, champagne, friend. <laughs> <laughs> Not too bad. <laughs> <It's> fine. <laughs> well, um, shall we meet later? Certainly, yes. Uh, I will go talk to the la- the good lady, the good Baroness. Yes, who's definitely extremely even keeled yes. and reputable. Is it true? The Duchess, yes. Okay. yes. Is, is it true that uh, I've, I, I have heard that your father is rather keen on a match for you? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well. I got quite the dressing down as I entered the room and tried to do anything else. Uh, can well, you roll for perception for me, please? <laughs> I don't want to die. <laughs> Uh, 19, 21. <laughs> oh, you're fine. Okay, so you look over, uh, and your father is kind of chatting amongst his his kind of friends. She has any friends? It's acquaintances, <laughs> neighbors. Sure. So he's not looking. Okay, okay, okay. So you're quiet. Great. Well, uh, Lady Sterling, uh, my dear friend, I should say that if the match is what I have heard, then, despite what might be in the papers or not. I would certainly keep one eye affixed to the back of your head at all times. Friend, I came to you for comfort. <laughs> <laughs> and I and offer I you be- my protection. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> I I must away. <laughs> and as you away, uh, you kind of hear this topic. That's awesome. <laughs> you uh, cross paths, uh, kind of, you know, through kind of the tables, arrays up and stacked of all this, like, tea cakes and fine drinks. Um, a very lovely, beautiful, tall, red-headed woman passes by you. Oh. And she makes her way directly to Lord Weston. Lord Weston. Can you roll for history to see if you know who this is? <laughs> Let's see if you remember her name. <laughs> so it's a six. You're not totally sure <laughs> what her name is. Miss. <laughs> Lady. <laughs> it's nice to see you. Yes, I can imagine. Did, did you have a nice summer? Charmed. Well, I just wanted to say (laughs) (laughs) Well, in a a room full of stars, you are the one that outshines them all. Illuminating my path with your grace. But may it be so, so bold. You may. And I do request that uh, you not worry about speaking your mind to me, however you see fit. Oh. That's good to know. And her face is like red like her hair. <laughs> it's like the same color. <laughs> Just would you like to, perhaps, to walk through the maze with me? I look around. <laughs> to see if there are any other prospects. Oh, it's <laughs> oh, devastating. Oh, 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 oh my! That's <laughs> twenty total. Ooh, okay. Um, as you kind of look around, you do see um, the Duchess Amaranth, who has made. She's walking towards the fortune teller. Um, she would be uh, a high-ranking match for you. Hmm. Um, the Duchess of uh, Montclair has been supposedly matched with the Lady Sterling. You don't know how much evidence there is to back that as well. Um, there is the Baroness, but you don't, she's kind of making her way, kind of the direction of the Maze Garden, so you don't really catch her eye. Um, and I was saying, where are you at? I was saying, with that high of a roll, you probably do see the Admiral as well. Um, I, I'm just surrounded by... Yeah, I was saying, you're, you're surrounded by kind of like your men, the generals, who have missed you so much. Um, so, uh, and you do see um, 
another woman, uh, Miss uh, Lancaster as well. Um, so very beautiful um, blonde hair. So she's very busty. Piercing blue uh, eyes. And she <laughs> has piercing blue eyes. Uh, you know that her family is, uh, she is uh, a lady as well. Uh, so she has a little bit of high rank as you. Uh, and her family is in textiles. And uh, she's very intelligent. So you do recognize Miss Lancaster as well. Uh, upon Wait. recognition of Miss Lancaster, I... Hey, you don't know anything about the girl you're just talking to, but yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I... I Look to the, the girl I'm talking to, and I say, Would you excuse me for a moment? Wait right here. <laughs> okay, and she just closes her eyes. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> and I beeline for Miss Lancaster. Okay, great. So Miss Lancaster at this point is kind of standing around, kind of a, um, a gaggle of um, women who just don't have as much notoriety or as wealth as she does. So she kind of stands up. Um, so she's kind of laughing, and she goes, Well, you know... That's just what it is to to travel. It is just eye-opening. You learned so much. <laughs> she and did take me away from my studies. And she kind of sees you out of the corner of her eye. Flips her long blonde locks to kind of show off. <laughs> She's got going on. <laughs> oh, Lord Weston. Mm. To travel and to witness the beauties thereof, I can attest. Although there are some beauties more local that I do not mind affixing my gaze. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and she kind of looks at her group of girls. She goes, ladies, you should go. And these <laughs> girls literally just take their parasols and they go, by Lord Weston. <laughs> also, at this point, you know there are people around, but if you are just in the uh, individualized attention of Miss Lancaster. So where all have you been in your travels to bring you home? It may be quicker to summarize it in the list of places I have not been. Oh, I know one you haven't been to. Hmm. I gaze up and down. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, she does the same. <laughs> I heard that you came to the ball on a stallion. Yes, I did. I thought it fitting, you know. I look around and I see such grandeur, such mm -hmm. showmanship. I think there is a um, an air of simplicity I can be missing sometimes. Oh. Yeah. So you're saying the Hawthorns are too much? Well, in order to arrive at a place, you only need one horse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, debating with you is its like a dance of intellects. Mm. I find myself eager for the next waltz. I'll see you tonight. Yes. Great. And you see her kind of take out her dance card and she writes her name first. And she kind of makes her way out. Uh, and let's go to our young uh, duchess who's made her way now to the fortune teller booth. On my way, I grabbed a drink. Um, sure. You know, sipping it gently, but also very eagerly. Right, excellent. I don't get to drink much. So. <laughs> uh, and at this point, you do kind of see... Actually, roll for perception. Let me see. Gotcha. Um, that's a seven. Okay, you have a sense that perhaps uh, your brothers have kind of their eye on you again. They're letting you do your thing, but that they are watching. Can I see them? Yeah. No. They're <laughs> 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 in the rafters. <laughs> <They're just there. laughs> I like go over to a table and pick up the cloth and look at the. Yeah. I'm going to go into the fortune tent. Great. So you open uh, the, the kind of the flaps of this purple and golden tent, and what you see are an array of really plush, gorgeous red velvet pillows. Um, and as you kind of go in there, you don't see anybody. Um, but what you do hear... Ba -ba -da 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 music. Music. You're going to hear... Oh, okay. Yeah, this is my one. Great. You are kind of a upbeat music that's a little... Strange, you don't know where it's coming from. Makes you a little mm -hmm. nervous, perhaps. 
And then suddenly another flap at the back of the tent opens. Whoosh, and in walks in a very refined, older woman. And she goes, and you know her at this point. Uh, you have heard some of your ladies in waiting say, I'll give you this one, um, that she is uh, the Lady MacLennon. And could you spell that for <laughs> M-A-C-L-E-O-N-D. MacLennon. Um, and she has been a widow for many years. She's filthy rich, so she just spends her time reading fortunes. Most of them, at least according to your ladies in waiting, are true. All right, so she walks in. She goes, hey, what's your name? I've been waiting for you. <gasps> Me? Future Duchess. I, I turn around to make sure there's nobody else in the tent. <laughs> Don't you sit down? And she pours you a cup of tea very quickly. Thank you. Drink it. Quickly, child. <laughs> How do you feel? Thirsty. Did more. <laughs> well, I guess. A glass of water. Where did my champagne go? Let me see that. And she snatches the glass out of your hand. And now what I will do is read the tea leaves. Well, don't look at me, child, while I do it. Um, can you roll four? <laughs> um, let's see perception for me, please. It's a fifteen. It's, you just, she's just looking at the tea leaves. That's all you're seeing right now. All right. I've seen your fortune. May, may I look at you? Yes, you can. Okay. I see in your future. Great love. Hi. <laughs> at this point, she's not really breathing very much. Sweet <laughs> <laughs> Love uh, and deception, perhaps some disgrace. Oh, well, I don't like those <coughs> things. I like the first thing better. No, no, leave me, child. Just leave it at laugh instead. <laughs> no, no, deception, disgrace. You should write it down before you forget. What? <laughs> <laughs> but some very nice. She looks around. I write down on my dance card, Deception and Disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> she's, I, she's looking for your brother, she goes, Trouble? And some very good... The horizontal waltzing for you. <gasps> Be gone, child! She chews you. Out of the tent. <laughs> Get out! <laughs> that was plenty <pretty> weird. <laughs> <laughs> I should have gone somewhere else. <laughs> uh, as you kind of walk out, you all start to hear kind of the sound of a trumpet. trumpet. I'm kidding. Uh, I'm kidding. Uh, at this point, you see a squire of the Hawthorne family say, Please make your way to the horse track for our race. Uh, and you see kind of all of the servants of the Hawthorne estate kind of ushering you towards the horse race. It's time. Um, I start hitting them. All right, so you all start making your way towards the... Uh, yeah, if we see each other, any, any of us on the way through? Uh, you all are going to... I mean, it's a pretty thin path past mm -hmm. the uh, garden maze. So you're all walking down kind of the same cobblestone, very beautifully lined floral path. So there's only kind of one road you're all taking to get to the racetrack. Uh, so. Uh, so, Lord Worthington, if you're done playing games, could I steal away <laughs> the Duchess Montclair and the her? <laughs> To the horse races. Oh. And are like, pulled out an arm to like, hook. <laughs> Not even like, wait for this guy. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. I sort of wave and I'm excited uh, in front of people and then I kind of wander to the back where the servants are mm -hmm. to try to see what they might know. Okay, great. Uh, would you like to talk to somebody <laughs> while you are walking that path? I look around to see if anyone's watching me. 
And so it depends on who's watching. Um, at this point, some of the, the servants eye you with recognition, uh, but they don't say anything to you. Mm. Interesting. So, uh, sure, I'd love to sort of discreetly whisper. Okay, great. So the person kind of next to you. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, this is a person you would recognize. Uh, she is probably in her mid to late 20s. Uh, works as uh, a kind of lady in waiting for a neighbor nearby, if you're safe. You don't know her name, though. Uh, great. So I ask, you know, how how is your day going? I'm, I'm sure very different than mine, but oh, I hope good. Um, yes, it's going well. Uh, I will say, um, all of us are, are very eager to learn a little bit more about the Duchess Montclair. Did you read today's Lady Whisper film? Yes, I did. Oh, you're into the gossip as well. Yes, well, it's said that she might have pushed him out of the balcony. <laughs> Do you think she did it? The <laughs> first floor balcony. <laughs> well, uh, yes. And then she's <laughs> <laughs> uh, At this point, you all have arrived at the horse track. Um, <clears throat> so at this, what you're seeing in front of you is kind of um, these kind of raked, um, it's like audience seats, let's say, that have chairs sent out. Um, everybody has parasols that are being held behind you because it is the summer, August sun is beating down on you. Um, and as you kind of make your way up to your seats, you're seeing in front of you uh, four really gorgeous horses that are already lined up uh, with their jockeys right next to them. Uh, so Lord Hawthorne walks out and he says, welcome esteemed guests to our annual horse race. You hear a big applause from the crowd. Something you're looking forward to. First up, we have the... Uh, I don't have a name for the The horse! This is Grace! And her jockey... Grayson! <laughs> applause! Applause! You recognize these horses. They are excellent um, racing horses. The next horse we have is the horse... Miller <laughs> with his jockey Lord Kyle. <laughs> okay. uh, and these are both like beautiful um, brown stallion horses. Yeah, that's the winner. Uh, and uh, the third horse, great. And this is Opal and her jockey Lord Felipe. <laughs> and then we have. From the house of Amaranth. And so, actually, can I have you guys all roll for, um, so, oh goodness, uh, insight? 21. 17. Okay. 15. 5. 5. 12. 12, 12. Okay, so 21. Way, excellent. Um, so all of you, uh, except Lord Trenning, who's just kind of sitting in his own like anxiety over there, um, <laughs> about people thinking he's unfaithful. Um, you all know that the Amaranth family is known for breeding these amazing, gorgeous horses that always win. That they, that's just what their family does. They're an equestrian family, so they have their wealth. If you want a horse, you would go to her family. Um, so you see this gorgeous, like, gray horse with these beautiful kind of white spots towards its tail. You know, very rare coloring to a horse. Um, and so this horse stands, like, very proudly at the end. Um, and Lord Hawthorne goes, And this is the Amaranth family's prized stallion. Mozart? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I had a name for this horse. Um, Mozart? Sir Piggly Wiggly! Piggledy Piggledy! Piggledy Piggledy! Piggledy Piggledy! Mozart for short. Yeah. I forgot. Wow. Uh, his friends call him Mozart. <laughs> and and his jockey? Charles Higgleston! Excellent. They race to a different tune. <laughs> um, all right, so the uh, jockeys all get on their horses. Um, and so you see one of the servants is kind of like very young. Um, <laughs> Boy, basically, with like a lot of acne, goes around. Anyone want to have a bet on a horse? Bet on a horse. My lord, if I were yeah. you, I would bet on the Amaranth horse. Bet on a horse. Give me your money. <laughs> yes, good sir. Would you like to bet on a horse? She pulls out an indiscriminately large amount of money. <laughs> Heads turn around. You. I go. Who? I'm betting on all of them. <laughs> <laughs> betting on all of 
Hello, Lord Weston, hero. Excellent. Lord Weston. Thank you, Lord Weston. Anybody else want to try? Anybody else want to try? At this point, uh, hearing his name, I'm going to get up. <clears throat> Excuse me, my lord. My Would you like to try? Uh, I don't better create my own luck through perseverance and dedication. <laughs> <laughs> I am a, but a mere boy of 12. What does that mean? Who wants to give your money? Um, my child stay disciplined, and you'll make it through life. No. Yeah, yeah, buddy. Give me your money. Uh, I would like to ask if you have a horse that you would like to bet on. You have a horse in this race? Yeah. yeah. Do I have a horse in this race? I don't have any horses in this race. Is there, love, any, is there any horse? Anything that you want to gamble? Oh, I don't really like to gamble on my luck. I prefer sureties. <laughs> Me as well. <laughs> what, a, what a pretty thing to say. <laughs> Are they still sitting with Lord Alexander or whatever? No, no, no she jumped. Oh, no. has already moved no, on. We... He's talking to the redhead girl oh. that you side cast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got it. Someone say she's still she standing still there to this day. day. <laughs> <laughs> the camera cuts to her, she goes, Hello? <laughs> Anybody here? Oh. What? And cuts back to us. I'm going to walk up to Lord Trenning at first time. Lord Trenning? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 sorry, sorry. Uh, Lord Weston. Lord Weston? Uh, yeah, he's sitting. Uh, okay. The young boy kind of scurries to where there's more money. Okay. He's found you useless. Cut <laughs> money. <laughs> Lord Weston. I say nothing. Mm-hmm. I just nod my head. <laughs> it's been some time. Yes, it has. Your brother is doing well. I should presume so. Did you not see Jack earlier? Yes. I see. Yes. He had some choice words for me. Did he now? He did. Care to regale me? No. I don't know. <laughs> 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 for honor, it's uh, perhaps best that I do not. Hmm. Honor, you say? Yes. Hmm. That's a wish I have plenty, and you have, I don't know. Little honor. Yes. What currency is that? Ah. Uh, Currency that we build ourselves with our own will and conviction, you see. Um, and what does that buy you? It buys you loyalty. It buys you wealth in the souls and hearts and minds of others. That is a wealth uncalculable by money, you see. In mm. I don't believe there is anything uncalculable. People uh, are staring. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is... You have women who are like... <laughs> who are fanning themselves. I will say... That is... A strong position to take. Mm. And I commend you. It is not my own position, but... I am no judge. We are free to make right and wrong decisions. Mm. That we are. But some positions put us in precarious states. Yes. Yes. Based on the things that I have read lately, I would imagine some decisions do. Yes. On that note, have you seen the trend? I can't say I have, though I have been looking for him. I see. Well, may your position give you the high ground to find him first Mm. before I do. And may your position prove adequate. Oh, my position <laughs> is always more than adequate. In fact, I lead from the top. My ships. I was saying you. <laughs> you understand. Befitting a rear admiral. admiral. <laughs> 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 Yeah, we can make um, it at this point, the, the, the jockeys are on their horse. <laughs> They're ready to go, and you guys are just hanging out. <laughs> All right, so they obviously said start to engines, but that's not credit. All right, uh, so you have to work uh, for my friends who have placed bets. Did you end up t- placing a bet? No, no great. No. All right, so you, no matter what happens, you win money and lose. <laughs> All right. All right, so what I'm happens gonna... when you play all sides? <laughs> <laughs> you break even. <laughs> you break even. A metaphor. <laughs> um, so in in character. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna roll the dice. They're gonna do the horse. are gonna do two laps, uh, and then we're gonna see who wins. So great. Roll. All right. So I know what's. All right. So they say. Um. 
Well, my horse is really damn. All right, so uh, they start. They goes. Whoosh, you see uh, somebody kind of throw a the the little oh, flag thing. Oh. Um, the horse start off. Uh, the first horse. The horse Miller with his jockey Kyle. Jockey Kyle literally rolled one. He his saddle comes undone. He fucking face plants onto the ground. Oh no! And he's out. Oh, I tear up one of my horses. <laughs> everybody like titters in the crowd. Oh, 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 I can see his underwear. <laughs> uh, the other three horses are making their rounds. Um, what you're seeing right now is that the um, horse from the Amaranth family is in the lead. The gray horse. Um, so they make their first loop around. You hear like the stomping the, of the hooves. Uh, the people are sitting on the edge of their seats. They love this race. Um, Okay, okay. Uh, and as they make their kind of way around, you start to see the other horse, Opal, starts to take the lead a little bit. They're neck and neck, Opal and um, Piggly Wiggly. No! <laughs> Piggly Piggly! Piggly Piggly, the horse! And they're neck and neck, neck and neck, neck and neck. You don't know who's going to win, you don't know who's going to win. Let's see. And there's a kind of a person in the back being like, all right, let's see who's going to win the last round. Oh, okay, very good. It is neck and neck, neck and neck in the very last second. The family Amaranth wins. Oh. Oh. I hold one of my four tickets. Yes. So- <laughs> 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 oh, you won! Yeah, In a way. In a way. Technically, I'm crumpling up the other three you tickets lost discreetly. three times for one once. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, and everybody's like, good show, oh, such a close race, bravo, bravo. Um, so the horses come to a trot um, and kind of make their way, the jockeys get off, they go over to um, the jockey Charles, shake hands, uh, and then uh, Lord Hawthorne goes over, grabs the hand of the jockey that was on Higgledy Piggledy, raises their hand in the air, and huzzah, excellent. And you see the four um, brothers, the four red-headed brothers that you've seen around, um, clapping. Um, very good. Can you guys, uh, so take a moment. Actually, can everybody give you a perception check? <clears throat> yes, of course. Congratulations. It's good to see that if you bet on all sides, you will lose three times. Two, eight. Mm. Before you 18, win once. okay. Until that's 17. Eight. I'm going to leave. Uh, okay. After, leave. Okay. I'm going to bow. Okay, great. 25. 25. That's nice Excellent. <laughs> 30. <laughs> okay. 10. All right. Uh, so the Duchess here takes a moment um, because she's very familiar with the um, with the other uh, dukes and duchesses' family. Let's say you're very familiar with their family. Uh, your estates are nearby. You notice um, the brothers start to look a little concerned. The four redheaded brothers. Where'd she go? See that? You hear some whispers. Mm-hmm. It, wait. Are we trying to wait? Who? She... I'm talking to the. Duchess. Oh my bad. Sorry. And then. That's just Montclair. I will, yeah, I'll look around to see if I see um, Lady Adrian, or sorry, not Adrian, uh, Lady <laughs> <laughs> Amelia. This is cruel. Yeah, it's cruel that, that we have two A's. Yeah, <laughs> two Lady A's. <laughs> okay, cruel to me okay, yeah. personally. <laughs> uh, and as you kind of you're looking around, stand up. Uh, you see somebody start to block your path as you're looking. Uh, <laughs> and you know, standing right in front of you, and you know who this person is. Uh, this is your now former mother-in-law. Uh, oh, the other Duchess yes. Montclair. Uh, and so she is looking at you, stare, just right in the eye, staring at you. She is in all black. Uh, she's wearing a black <laughs> She has a very beautiful black oh. lacy summer hat that has dark Sips lace tea. covering her face. <laughs> black gloves up her hands, and all of her servants behind her trailing are also all dressed in black. Mm. She's right. In ah. How dare you shut this here? Yeah, Duchess. Dare you! You murderer! And she starts to sob. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, I'm like stunned. I'm like, <laughs> and she is weeping. All of her ladies' knees are weeping. And she is in her late 30s, so she's a very young mother. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Murdering tot! <laughs> 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 you. <laughs> 
I just tried to do something. Grace. Push what? <laughs> she pushed my young Eugene out the window. <laughs> she. I'm. <laughs> your Grace. You show your face here. And she takes her fan and hits you on the shoulder. This is. A hold up. <laughs> she might be a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> I love her. This is beyond. You pushed him. You had your wedding night with him, and the next morning he's dead. The breach of decorum. The the it absolute. I don't want to hear another word out of your mouth. You, you take my family's lying. money. And you pushed him. And he fell. And at this point, she's looking at the crowd. She's not even looking at the There were three oh. stories. She pushed him. My lady's made saw him. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, we saw her push him. We saw her push him. How dare you? Your and she is just sobbing his terror. will be ashamed of your behavior. Do not How dare you come to this public event to create this performance and scene, knowing full well that this was. And you show up in white trash. And you appear like a bride. Ah! Lady Montclair. Lady Montclair. Duchess, do you? Duchess Montclair. You low ranked cheater. I want to hear from you. Surely. Surely not everything that is published in the papers has the merit of truth. More treading! <laughs> oh my goodness. Lucius. I found him. <laughs> By this time I found you champagne win. and I'm just sitting and sipping on it. I walked Duchess, over. have a seat. To you. you are <laughs> spilling my allegations. Son is Enough. Dead. Enough. I saw his And she is at this one. Uh, she kind of leans over, and you see her kind of fall uh, into uh, the arms of Balthazar, your oldest brother. Just she's uh, uh, unconsolable, let's say. <laughs> oh, oh no! And your brother's like, "All right, lady, there they are." We're across. We're across the other I'm... side of the uh, arena here, sort of the. Like, oh, it's turned into up an arena. A little myself. Pat her shoulder. <laughs> so sorry. I do last you know. I know how grief can turn someone into something they aren't. And I, I'm sorry you feel that I could possibly have done this, but I need you to know. I miss him. Of course I do. I could not hope to compare to your grief. He was your son, and I knew him for. A scant 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> you would have had the good graces to get pregnant to give me an heir. Uh, it was a, oh my god, what a sad time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, what wow. beautiful. I knew him so briefly. <laughs> two and a half minutes. <laughs> you saw <him> briefly. <laughs> <laughs> of course, my grief could not compare to yours. Oh, to be a mother. Unclear. I could not possibly know your grief. I'm roll for deception. <laughs> <laughs> for deception. Or persuasion. Persuasion. <laughs> Eighteen. Okay, chosen choice. I guess it still means that you are my daughter. Oh! And she puts her just crying, yes. sobbing face yeah. into your bosom. Now. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so hurt. You're all I have now. I, and, and you know, of course, we have to take care of each other. We have to stick together, the Duchess Montclair. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I'm like, can someone bring a drink? And and uh, a fan and get her into somewhere nice and cool. A place I guess, to yes. Her, uh, her ladies are waiting. Take her and they kind of scuttle <laughs> her away. I'm sure the Lord Hawthorne like, has chamomile yeah, to soothe the throat for yes. the grief at such volume. Yes, <laughs> yes. Lord, Lord, Lord and Lady Hawthorne come out at this point. They go, all right. Uh, let's start to make our way towards the greenhouse. 
for the dance. We kind of look at each other like, who did we invite to this party? <laughs> Regretting the invitation list a little bit. Um, so you can either stay for a little bit, or he's kind of instructed the servants to kind of start shuttling. Lucius and I are still eyes locked across the room. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, <laughs> whose side are you on? Yours. You know this. Might we please speak in private? What does this mean to you? Tell me. Everything. I spent four years. We're just talking across the raceway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and people are just like, kind of leaving. They're holding their parasols. They're like the at war, fighting for us, for you, for everything we hold dear. I have not committed the crime you accuse me of. Prove it then. You're hearing a lot of whispers. They're calling. They're saying, Shh, "Unfaithful neighbor. He was protecting his country." And what about the, the war? Whose side are you on? Your family. My family has their opinions, and those do not necessarily align with mine. God damn it, Ewan! And I'm gonna storm off. You're pretty much standing there alone at the racetrack at this point. <laughs> I was saying, unless there's other people there, but the rest of the town has kind of made their way out. Am I still there? It's up to you. I I'd think... like to still be there. Ooh. Yeah, still be there. Mm. I'm just watching. That's up to you. I think we're watching together. Or yeah, I think we're watching say, yeah. together, both drinking champagne, being like, ugh, I think I'm going to need another one of these if this continues. I just give the. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm aware he's your friend, and you want to comfort him. He's doing remarkably well. <laughs> you know, I sort of just uh, 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 bow my head in sorrow and, and slowly make my way into the. As you start to. Uh, kind of leave. I'm gonna have the three of you that are still left. Can you roll for perception for me? 20. Okay. Lady Sterling and Duchess 16. Enclair. Uh, that was a, uh, uh, um, uh, in perception? Yes. 16 as well. Okay. Um, Lady Sterling, you see that the, the gray horse <laughs> with the white spots, the amaranth horse, uh, is still trotting around with its jockey. All right. It's the only horse to laugh at <clears throat> Are they supposed to do that? <laughs> it's, out of, it's a little out of place. At this yeah. point, everybody has left. So I'll sure. confess, I believe it's not visual. Jen. Yes. Did you... I, I, maybe could I, could I have been looking around the crowd when they were having this mm -hmm. conversation to see if anybody was like particularly amused by my <laughs> friend's honor on the line. Um, or... it's, yeah, it's <sighs> it's kind of half and half. Yeah, some people really take Lady Whistle down or Whistle Revealed to Heart. <laughs> uh, and, and, Redacted. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and some folks kind of they think it's a little below them to read it and take it. To, so it was. It was pretty split. A lot of people really hold him in high regard because of his commitment to the queen. Um, mm -hmm. But also, uh, no, he comes from a very wealthy family. So sure. it's kind of split. Okay. Uh, my friend, if it is proof that uh, the Admiral Storm is looking for of your honor, then we shall seek out the source of the rumor. And mm -hmm. of course, my condolences. I know so intimately how damaging these false accusations are. <laughs> <laughs> it is in, yes. in, ruining. In, indeed. Ruinous. Thank you, Lady Sterling. I would greatly appreciate the opportunity to find this vile slander. Slander. And surely, if we find proof of your essence, then there must be evidence of yours. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to my late husband <sighs> has a terrible, terrible tragedy. <laughs> and it does pain me, I have to say, that somebody would spread these undignified, 
awful, disgusting rumors. It is <laughs> truly terrible. <laughs> if you would excuse me, please. It seems. I mean, I, I'm actually going <laughs> to yeah. seek out uh, uh, Lord Weston. Okay. Uh, he had just, he doesn't get very far. He's walking with the Baroness Umbry. Uh, so he's not too far down the path, kind of heading back towards the manor, towards uh, the greenhouse, which is, when I say greenhouse, I mean, it is a full building where they're setting up. Uh, the ball is already started to take place. You hear the music, the violins going. Lord Weston, if I may borrow a moment of your time, please. I turn toward him and hand my glass of champagne off and bid her leave. I say, I'm going to drink it. Enjoy <laughs> <laughs> your time. <laughs> Surely you've read the papers? Yes. How, 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 who could possibly say such terrible things about me? You know I have been ever the subject of dignity. My eye have I my eye has never wanted, not once. Of your loyalty, I know no one else who can hold a candle to the <clears throat> incredible degree of uh, faith and and proficiency that you have thank you you are a dear friend as i aim to continue to be and i may add whoever did start <laughs> this thing spike <laughs> bad, I'm sorry. I'm new DM over here singing around music. <laughs> Ambient opera. <laughs> the music turns dark. <laughs> <laughs> Storm cloud. <laughs> it begins to rain. <laughs> it, it begins to rain as you are standing outside. Yes, that is true. Dark and stormy night. I, I say. Your shirts are getting a little wet. Oh. I'm just saying. <laughs> Whoever did start this preposterous rumor <laughs> surely could not be someone who has encountered multiple women already this evening, and certainly not someone who would play, say, four sides to a horse race. Of, of course not. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> someone like that would be of... Um, Poor character. Yes, indeed. Yes. Harold, you are a dear friend, and you have known me longer than, well, well, most anyone in the ton. And I'll have you know that your friendship and our time together in my fiancé's absence has spent the world to me. Thank you. It's my pleasure, old friend. Well, <laughs> we should head inside before our clothes are ruined. <laughs> yes. I all in white, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's getting a little nipply. It is a warm summer rain, though, so. Oh, it's I You're standing alone. reluctantly agree. <laughs> <clears throat> Lady Sterling has offered that we might seek out the source of these accusations. Should I need the use of your network, I assume that you would be willing to indulge this request of mine. Anything I have to offer is yours. Thank you. At this point, the rain has really started to pick up. Uh, and it is, uh, at, this point, at this point, the horse track has kind of just turned into mud and everybody has made their way into the greenhouse. When you all enter, uh, the ball, the dancing portion of today is in full swing. 
Uh, people have filled out their dance carts. They are, you've seen kind of this beautiful array of dresses swirling and tailcoats kind of lighting in the, in the wind. And this uh, greenhouse is covered with chandeliers made of glass, like different colors. Um, so chandeliers that are pinks and greens and blues, kind of mimicking the colors of the summer. Uh, and so you see at kind of the back of it is a little bit of a, um, a stage that has a quartet that's playing waltzes. Uh, and all the couples are dancing in the finery. Um, and it is a really beautiful summer evening with the rain trickling. You see it kind of cascade down the glass walls of this great house. It's very beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, see. Um, so as you make your way in, you are welcome to dance with anybody. If you have your dance card, that has a couple of spots as well. Um, but as you walk in, Lord Weston, immediately you see Miss Lancaster. Uh, she has changed outfits, so she is in a really beautiful, kind of rich, deep emerald dress that really brings out kind of the greenness of her eyes. Her blonde hair is put up uh, very elegantly, uh, and uh, she comes straight up. She says, my lord. My lady. <clears throat> you are wet. Mm. So it would seem. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and she kind of just like giggles a little bit. She'll see you. Um, your name is the only one on my dance card. Mm-hmm. I reach down and remove my shoe and pour the liquid. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're very brave. Yes, well. To think you won't slip on that water. I can be quite sure of foot. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> And, and she is waiting for you to extend your hand as his cups come with you. And I... So choose. I measure the situation. She's Look. filthy rich. Yes. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> for context. Is this the big plastic bar? Or? Yeah, this is the big booby block. Okay, got gotcha. yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it. I... Booby. <laughs> booby. <laughs> Piercing blue eyes. Oh, shit, they were blue. One's blue and one's green. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's looking, right? Yeah. I, I uh, discreetly she uh, glance back toward uh, Lord Ewan. Okay. And then back toward uh, Lady Lancaster. Mm-hmm. Sigh. And extend my hand. Hmm. Smart choice. She takes it. Uh, and as you start to dance and swirl around, uh, can I please have a roll for performance? to see how good of a dancer you are. Mm. With slippery shoes? Yeah, with slippery shoes. And everybody is Uh-oh. staring at you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're actually gonna do a disadvantage uh, because everybody is staring at you because you're sopping wet. Uh, and Lord Weston is also sopping wet, so. But he's slow. No, you're Lord Weston, you're also wet. Uh, so please roll a disadvantage, which means you're gonna roll again another d20 and pick the lowest of the two. Okay. Well. <laughs> So six plus, what is that? Performance to eight. Oh, okay. So um, what ends up happening as you, do you put your boots back on? Oh. I put the shoe back on. Yes. Right. So as you're, as you're yeah. waltzing a really beautiful dance, um, the whole time you're hearing squeaks and 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 that out of the way. Just, I saw so, an accident yep, waiting to happen. Okay. <laughs> the, the wetness. Um, so you are just squeaker but squeaky over there. Uh, but Miss Lancaster doesn't seem to mind. What happens though uh, is, uh, could you roll for dexterity, please, as you're dancing with her? Because now the floor around you is wet. Oh. Uh, five. Uh, yeah, just serious shame for. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so as you turn to do a spin with her. She uh, is turning back into your arms. You skrr, slide, uh, and you basically fall straight backwards into oh. a huge uh, pot of hydrangea flowers. Uh, so as you crash into it, she lands on top of you. Uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, can you please roll for perception? What are you looking at, bro? <laughs> uh, so there's flowers. Dirt. At this point, there's dirt everywhere. Uh, covering now your wet shirt that's covered in dirt. Nat 20. Whoa! Oh. Um, so as Miss Lancaster falls on top of you, um, you feel this really uh, strange sensation 
<laughs> um, so as she basically just like um, belly flops on top of you, and as her kind of uh, large chest lands on you too, her stomach pushes against yours too, and you feel a weird against your stomach from her stomach. Oh. Roll for perception again. Gamus. Mm. Oh. <laughs> that wasn't sorry. That wasn't a real roll. <laughs> 13, uh, for perception, uh, 16. Well, interesting. Um, so what you feel, she looks up at you with her piercing blue eyes <laughs> and makes a very panicked eye contact, uh, and you feel another kick in her stomach because you're that close to her. <gasps> then she puts her finger up to your mouth. And I go... <laughs> <laughs> and she leaves it there. Would you like to dance again? I remove her finger. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. And she kind of gets herself up and dusts some of the dirt off of her green dress and waits for you. I get up. I notice all of the dirt. I shrug. Stick my hand out. And she takes your hand and you begin to waltz. This time very well. You move from the <laughs> spots. <laughs> um, at this point, you start to um, hear a little bit of a hush go against. Uh, talk amongst yourselves as I figure out our music. <laughs> um, can I walk up? I'm going to walk up to Lady and. <clears throat> Great, yes. And I'm still a little bit fuming. Uh, not obviously you at uh, other situation, but you may have, may or may not have witnessed out of whatever. <clears throat> and I pull out a bouquet of Everest flowers that I happen to take from the garden. Oh. My lady. For you? The Admiral Storm. <laughs> I always wanted to tell you I never had a chance to talk with you, nor your family, but uh, our troops used to train with your family's horses, and they were incredible. Thank you so much. We take quite pride in our work. I can certainly tell that. <clears throat> Excuse me. A little bit flustered. Oh? Whatever for? I'm not that threatening, am I? No, it's nothing to do with you, my lady. Um, that wasn't the answer I was looking for. No, was <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, perhaps if you're interested in the dance. Oh, I am. I danced very well in the academy. I have trained in the <laughs> You just got <laughs> his name down. No, I, I, I'm just looking at the flowers you gave me, and I'm like, I don't know what to do with these. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I'll keep them safe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I would love a dance. Of course. I'm an excellent dancer. Uh, roll for a performance. Let's see. I'm at an advantage. Do we both have to roll? Oh, at advantage. Oh, I do have. Um, okay. He's leading, That's so it really is kind of up to him. 27. Okay. Great, yeah, you are in good hands. <laughs> yeah, I'm very kind of, uh, uh, like, not rigid, but uh, just sort of commanding in the way I can dance with uh, a lot of practice. Oh, I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, so I can take you around and chat at the same time, yes. And I'm just staring <laughs> at this from the sidelines. And you see me catching a glance on occasion at the, Just... <clears throat> Devastating. <laughs> utterly, utterly devastating. As we're dancing, I'm... Yes. Marital troubles. Right. Yes, I want to say that. Had you, did you read the lady... Whisperfield? Whisperfield. <laughs> I did, but, you know, things tend to be exaggerated. A bit? I need a dip. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. Well, your beauty is not exaggerated, I would say that for sure. Oh, quite the charm. Well, I've been at sea for a long time. And? Well, <laughs> uh, I can be frank, I was looking for love. Oh? Upon my return, but love is not as dedicated as I thought it was. I lean into your, yeah. Well, it seems love could be in maybe a few other places that you might not have checked. Can you vote for perception as she gets really close to you? Uh, so, as opposed to his usual uh, composure, uh, I am getting a little bit 
Ren's face. Even though I've been in war and been stabbed. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sure I roll an advantage, actually, because you are right next to her. <laughs> I am very distracted by Lady Amorth, apparently, <laughs> as a five. Okay, um, uh, you have a moment, so she has, the, she has, like, blonde hair, right? Uh, and you have a moment, she gets kind of close to you, you see a little bit of, like, uh, almost like it looks like she has a piece of grass or a piece of dirt on her neck. And then she turns as well. To keep dancing. Interesting. I noticed... I noticed that uh, you have some grass on your neck. Oh. Oh, please, I, I can... Silly me. How did that get there? <laughs> 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 okay, I I literally have no idea. Like not even me as a player has any idea what's going on. But you rolled really well, bro. Like, <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Well, thank you very much for cleaning me up. I didn't realize that I was. Oh, it's such a state. So oh, it's perfectly fine. Um, say, have you ever been with a rear admiral before? Uh, and in that moment, <laughs> you're a dun 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 dun. dun. Everybody freezes. Let me tell you. Okay, a very upbeat song begins to play. Uh, and you all see the person who you have been, perhaps as part of high society, waiting for all night. The doors whoosh, sweep open. And in enters, surrounded by an entourage of very high class ladies in waiting, small tiny corgi dogs, uh, is the Queen Violet first enters. And you all immediately bow. You do not wish to be beheaded. She is a vision of grace with her very iconic purple hair cascading down her back. She has beautiful sapphire eyes that perhaps hold galaxies in them. Uh, and she has a beautiful opulent purple gown. It is part of, you know her, that but that is her signature color. No one in this city is allowed to wear her. As she enters, uh, and she looks like I'm not looking around. Woo! Yeah, she looks like a dungeon master. Yeah. Uh, and as uh, Queen Violet enters, she takes the stage, uh, and in a very kind of moment of pause, she just waits. And uh, I'm gonna have you guys roll for history, please. Just the room is kind of bathed in a glow. Oh, that's that's seven. Ooh. So seven. Okay, 24. <laughs> Excellent. All right, so we know from your conversations with perhaps um, the town folk and your conversations of just being a duchess. Um, 21. You, and 21, wow. great. Uh, because you're part of the high society, you know that she comes in, likes to take her space. She is known as Vain Violet uh, because she takes very much into account her appearance. Um... And her king is nowhere to be found, which is pretty typical. Um, he uh, is a bit of a loser. So she just kind of lets him just do his own thing. And, and he is he the 77th her. Edward. Yeah, he is Edward the 77th. Not um, in the and at so, all. Yeah, he just doesn't really, he's just hanging out. Basically playing video games at all. Like, that's what he's doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Call of Duty. Yeah, basically. He's um, playing so she... stick and hoop. <laughs> yeah. um, and so basically this string quartet kind of plays her music, her leading music as she walks in. It's nice to see you all tonight on this beautiful evening. Oh, what a pleasant night. What a dance. And what a pleasant night. To name the season's diamond. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. You're doing she great. Turns to them You're doing and great. She goes, it's not the Yule Ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's behead him. And he takes his violinist that you've known for many a years. And he's never seen again. Oh. What? <laughs> Darn. <laughs> so sting. As I was saying. My diamond of the season. Now, she is beautiful beyond compare. So I would not choose her. She is kind, but not as kind as me. Oh, she is beautiful, but not as beautiful as me. She is wealthy, not as wealthy as me. <laughs> and she is a little bit of a 
rebel, as I was when I was her age, which was not very long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Danger month. Our diamond of the season has many names. Perhaps one as the Jockey Charles. Tisk tisk, you naughty girl. But also known as Lady Amaranth. <gasps> applause! Applause! God! Applause! Congratulations! Thank you. Thank you, Your Majesty. My diamond, now I expect you to make a great love match. Oh, I shall. Uh, and her kind of head lady in waiting gives you uh, a beautiful red velvet box. Thank you. Oh, well, open it. <laughs> what do I see? Uh, inside of it, you are seeing a really beautiful uh, golden tiara that is encrusted with just enormous sparkling shimmering diamonds. For you to catch someone's eye with. <laughs> it's incredible, Your Majesty. I've been watching you. You're quite an equestrian. Thank you. Your Majesty. My money was on your horse. So thank you for winning. I didn't want to have to be a you. <laughs> Only the best for your for you, Your Majesty. Look forward to seeing how your season plays out. Thank you, Your Majesty. Nah, no, you can go. Yes, oh, Your Majesty. Put it on. Oh, it's a gift. <laughs> um, I'm still standing next to um, oh. uh, Admiral Storm, and I, I take I take it and I take the box and I shove it into his hands. Oh. <laughs> I believe it does fit perfectly. Oh, tasty. It's radiant. And she just kind of doesn't, she doesn't touch your face, obviously. Um, but she kind of has her head right next to your cheek. Hmm. Very good. All right, off you go. Yes, your majesty. Congratulations. Uh, and everyone is staring at you. Just wide-eyed. Uh, and at that point, when the dances kind of start again, every single eligible person is whoop, be lying right to you. So, with that being said, we're gonna end this first episode. Bravo! You did a wonderful job. Yay. Yay. Oh, yay. Smite that like, like button, ring that notification bell, subscribe. Uh, let us know uh, what you think is going on with some of these secrets and what's going to be in the next Lady uh, Whisperfield. I'm going to subscribe. This is awesome. Let's see you, okay. <laughs> and, and, and thank oh. yous. And thank yous. Oh, and thank you. Sorry. Uh, and thank you to Digital Castaway. Uh, thank you very much to Morgan, our amazing artist in residence. Uh, amazing creator of Dungeons and Dead. No, I'm 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 great. 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 I didn't go. I didn't go. I don't know who else. Anyways, a lot of other people. Becca. <laughs> Becca. <laughs> and Drew. And everybody Nick. involved for sound. Nick. And I'm my mom. I'm just happy to be here. Great work, everybody. That was fantastic.